Hi folks, learning to play the mandolin is challenging enough with an instrument that plays like a dream. Why make it more difficult by struggling with high action? In this lesson, I'm going to talk about action and show you how it's adjusted. The term action is a general term which basically means how high the strings are off the neck. Strings which are way up above the frets means you're going to have to work harder to push them down. And if they're too low, they're really easy to play, but they'll often buzz and vibrate and make all kind of rattles. So we don't want that either. Now, a very simple way you can check the action height um, right down here at the nut, where it's very critical, is to press down your, your strings there at the first fret and just kind of get a sense of how hard that feels to bring that string down to the fret. So kind of remember how that feels and then hold it down at the first fret and reach up and push the second fret note down. Now that second fret note should feel about the same as the first fret note did. And on a lot of mandolins, when you first get them, uh, they'll be really high at the nut and that first fret will be hard to push down. But when you hold it, the second fret will be really easy. What we want is it to feel just as easy to play that note as we do this note. And you can check that on all the strings too. So what you're looking for is that perfect middle ground where the strings are relatively easy to press down and we're getting a good clear tone with no buzzing. Let's look at how the action on your mandolin is adjusted. This mandolin is an F style mandolin and it has the typical bridge that you find on most mandolins made today. It has a two piece bridge, has a, a bottom part here called the feet well, that's what I call it, and the upper part, which uh, some people call the saddle. And they're joined by a screw, a little, there's a threaded rod and a thumb wheel on each side. So that if you release the tension of the strings, you can easily turn that little thumb wheel on those threads and raise or lower the upper part of the bridge. So it's a pretty simple thing with a bridge like this to uh, lower the height of the strings or raise the height of the strings either direction within the limits of the length of the screw uh, sometimes you can run them down so low that you just can't go any lower in that case you'd have to do a little sanding on the bottom of the bridge in order to, to go lower um, also you can raise it up only to the point of when you run out of screw eventually you're going to get to the top and it'll fall off uh, but the really nice thing about these is that as as your humidity changes affect the mandolin or as just time takes its toll on your mandolin, the action may go down and you'll be able to raise it up. Also, as your playing ability changes, uh, when you start out, you may need a much lower action uh, just so that you can, you can stand to play the mandolin for, for longer periods of time as you build up strength and you, you may find that you want to raise the action up a little bit to uh, get a little bit louder tone but these adjustable bridges make it really easy to do that. Just be sure that you loosen the strings up at least partially so that you can turn the, turn the little thumb wheels easily. If you try to just turn them with full tension on it, you'll probably strip the screws out and you'll find they're really difficult to turn. So just loosen the strings up partially, not enough so that the bridge will move around because the bridge is not glued down. So you want to keep the bridge in place. Just loosen the strings up until they're pretty slack and then you'll be able to easily turn the screws uh, to make slight changes. You can even make angle adjustments if you, if you want the treble side a little bit lower and the bass side a little bit higher. That's pretty easy to do with this kind of bridge. Okay, so what we're looking at here is an old Gibson mandolin from about 1914, and this one was made before the days of the adjustable thumb wheels. So this bridge is a solid piece of wood you still can raise or lower the strings, but you're going to have to do it by adding shims underneath or uh, you're going to have to sand the bottom of the bridge to lower it. And uh, if you need to do those things, I would really suggest you take it to a luthier who knows something about mandolins before you do that. Um, however, if you do have this kind of solid wood bridge, um, you can always remove it and just save it since it's a little piece of history and replace it with the more modern version which came out in the 1920s 
uh, of the adjustable thumb wheel design and, and you can just swap them out and then you'll be able to more easily adjust the strings up or down. Now we've already looked at how you can raise or lower the strings um, down at the bridge and that's, uh, that's the easy place to do it. Um, you also have to consider the other end which is down here at the nut. Now the nut is this little white piece of bone. Sometimes they're made of mother of pearl and sometimes um, some more outlandish things like plastic. Uh, but that, that little white piece you see there, um, sets the height of the string above the fret. So the, the taller the nut, the higher the strings. Obviously, just from looking at it, you can see there's no real adjustment there that you can't turn a screw or something and raise or lower that. So the way, the way this is done is if you want to lower the strings, the uh, string is loosened up and removed from the little slot, and then a very small file is used to make the slot deeper. And that's a pretty tricky job. Uh, it is something you can learn to do, but uh, nobody is born knowing how to do it. So you'll, you'll have to check out my book or take it to a guitar repairman or a mandolin expert and that's how it's done. The slots are made deeper to bring that string closer down. Uh, the other thing is sometimes they're too low and you may be getting buzzes where the string is so close to that first fret that it's rattling against the first fret and in that case they need to come up and adding height is a little trickier. Um, it's, uh, it's one possibility is to add shims underneath the nut and that's done fairly frequently especially as an emergency repair you would take the nut out put a very thin shim under it and put it back in there um, another possibility and it's a little bit more costly but it's probably the preferred method is simply to have a have an entirely new nut made and so if you think about that, if you do decide to do some filing on your nut, make sure you get the right tools, make sure you understand what you're doing, and above all, don't go too low. You want to kind of sneak up on it. Just take a tiny bit off, tune it up, see where you are, make sure you're happy. If you go wild and you get those slots too deep, you're going to have buzzes here at the first fret, and then you will be making a new nut, so you don't want to do that. Another factor in action is the straightness of the neck. Let's see how that affects action. Alright, once you've uh, done your adjustments at the bridge and had any adjustments made or made some changes at the nut, uh, that is about all you can do easily to change the height of the strings. However, there's another factor that comes into play and that is the straightness or out of straightness or you could say curvature of the neck. If the neck is extremely straight you will get a different action in the middle than if there's some curvature. So the more curved the neck is the higher the action will be in the center here. So what you can do is take a straight edge like a ruler like this and put it on the frets it's going to be a little hard to see in this video, but when the straight edge is laying on the frets, you can look under the center and see if you see any clearance at all. And, and normally a slight bit of curvature is normal. There'll be a little bit of clearance here in the center in a normal neck. Um, if, on the other hand, if if you put the straight edge on there and it rocks back and forth like there's a high place here in the center, then you, you have a back bow on the neck. And that's going to cause the action to be lower than normal here in the center. So I'm just bringing all this out to, to point out, uh, to remind you that the neck, the curvature or the relative straightness of the neck is an issue in, in terms of speaking about action. Now there are some adjustments that can be made and one of them is if your mandolin has what's called a truss rod running down the neck, you can adjust that and we'll take a look at that. Okay, in this shot you can see I've got two mandolin necks here. I've got the, uh, 
the F style that I built uh, back about 20 years ago. And if you look right here, you'll see there's a little uh, black plastic cover held on by two screws. And the presence of that little cover tells you that this, this neck has a truss rod in it, which is the means of making some slight adjustment to the curvature of the neck. And over here on this, this unfinished project I've been working on for a couple of years, you can see a little more clearly what's going on with the truss rod. Underneath the cover, you see the adjusting nut right here. And if you look up here, you can actually see the routed out channel where the rod is buried down inside the neck and then it's been covered up with a strip of wood. Now that rod, if it's tightened, will tend to bend the neck backwards. And if it's loosened, the strings will tend to pull the neck forwards. So it is slightly adjustable. You can't make tremendous huge changes in the curvature of the neck, especially on mandolin necks because they're very short and they're very stout. And I really don't even recommend that without any training or knowledge that you uh, take the cover off and start twisting on that nut. In fact, I strongly recommend that you don't do that. If you don't know what you're doing, and believe me, I didn't know what I was doing for a very long time, and I'm still a little bit cautious when I, when I mess around with truss rods. I've, I take it to a guy that I really trust if I need to make any major adjustment to it. But I just want to show you that it's here. Your mandolin may not have a truss rod. Uh, the, uh, the old Gibsons did not have them. You know, they came in um, in later years. Almost all mandolins today have them. But if you, if you believe that you've got a, a neck warpage or curvature problem, um, take it to a luthier and have them take a look at the truss rod. Sometimes the nut has worked its way loose uh, that little brass nut inside there. Uh, that is one thing you could safely check and that's take the cover off and at least confirm that it's not just spinning free in there and rattling around. Uh, you know, just snug it up finger tight um, and don't put any real pressure on it. You could be fairly safe in doing that because I have had cases where somebody's mandolin was, was making kind of an odd rattle and it was either the truss rod cover itself was loose or the nut was completely loose. And in that case, you can just, just snug it up just so that it doesn't rattle. Um, I will say this, that um, turning that nut even a quarter of a turn can make a huge difference in the curvature of the neck. So again, I caution you to uh, not play around with the truss rod unless you uh, are willing to bear the risk. Let's put it that way. However, on the other hand, somebody that knows how to adjust it it can make all the difference in how your mandolin plays if you've got the proper amount of neck relief. A lot of players struggle because their mandolin is set up poorly. Make sure that you're using every possible advantage to make learning and playing as easy as possible. For more information, check out my other video lessons and also take a look at my book called The Mandolin Handbook. It's like an owner's manual for the mandolin. It has 80 pages of information and is full of illustrations and how-to instructions. It covers just about everything you can think of from common repairs to dealing with humidity. It discusses the science of tuning, protecting your instrument, amplification, and all kind of other stuff. And you'll find it here on the site. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson.